Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about the new ICE policy to move as many people out of immigration court proceedings across the country to move as many of them off the docket as possible. If you're in removal or you know someone who is in removal, watch this video and share it with others, of course. I'm attorney Latoya McBean Pompey, an immigration lawyer in New York, working with clients all over the world on complex business and family immigration matters. Reach out to us at McBean Law at 516-866. 3900 or at mcbeanlaw.com where you can book your appointment. Before you go today, guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you'll stay in the loop uh, as I put out my videos each week. Now let's talk about this. This is called prosecutorial discretion. I did a shorter video about this just a few weeks ago when the memo was issued. And in that video, I talked about the fact that the Department of Homeland Security has now directed its attorneys uh, in immigration court proceedings to group people, to group the cases into two categories. The first category is known as priority cases. Priority cases are the cases that the government wants to litigate all the way until the end. They are not looking to terminate or settle or close out those cases not unless there are some other circumstances that your lawyer can argue that would allow ICE to settle the case with you. But those are priority cases, and I'm going to talk about which cases are priority cases shortly. The second category is known as non-priority cases. Non-priority cases, guys, is basically everyone else who uh, is on the docket in court, or you may actually have had a removal order issued against you years ago, and there is an opportunity for you to reopen your case, terminate proceedings, so that you may finally get a green card through USCIS. What we're learning based on an analysis by AILA, the American Immigration Lawyers Association, this non-priority bucket uh, consists of about 700,000 cases. And if they are labeled non-priority, ICE is directed to get you off the docket, get you out of court so that they could target their resources on the cases that really matter. This is the memo that um, lays it all out for us and helps us to understand the three categories, the, the two categories, I should say, of individuals. But let's talk about the priority cases, the who fall into the priority bucket. Again, priority cases are those that they do not want to settle. They want to litigate it all the way until the end. The first group is those that are considered a threat to national security. Here we're talking about people who are considered a danger because they are suspected of terrorism or espionage related crimes. The second priority group is called threat to public safety. The threat to public safety are those individuals who have committed serious criminal conduct, okay? But there are some circumstances in which ICE will allow your lawyer to argue certain facts and circumstances to determine whether um, yours is a case that they can settle, despite the fact that you may have a serious criminal record. OK, and then the third um, types of cases that they are not looking to settle. And I'm going to talk about this in detail because this applies to those of you who have some serious fraud on your record. It is the threat to border security. If you are considered a threat to border security, the government does not want to settle your case. Now, who are these people? Right. Or I should say. What types of cases are considered a threat to border security? I've pulled up an email that we sent out to our email list uh, just a, a week or so ago that breaks it down in an easy to understand way. And so for those of you who are considered a threat to border security, we're, just, we're talking about individuals who were apprehended at the border, you were caught at the border or a port of entry for attempting to unlawfully enter the United States and you may have been involved in smuggling others into the country or cases where there uh, you it's considered a serious immigration fraud that must be or has that has been, I should say, has been criminally 
prosecute it. So for example, when we talk about a serious immigration fraud, we're talking about marriage fraud cases. And the memo did mention marriage fraud cases. Also cases involving a frivolous asylum application that resulted in that frivolous asylum bar finding. Also considered a threat to border security are those who use fraudulent documents um, to get to gain entry into the United States unless You use those documents in an attempt to uh, flee persecution. And then there are some other serious immigration violations that the government does not like, and they do not want to settle those cases. And specifically, the memo mentioned false claims to U.S. citizenship. If you had uh, misrepresented on uh, an employment application that you're a U.S. citizen, or you may have voted or registered to vote, or You may have used a U.S. passport or birth certificate to gain entry or some benefit. Yours is a case that ICE is indicating in its memo here that they're not willing to settle. How can prosecutorial discretion help you uh, close out your case or terminate removal proceedings against you? Well, in our email, we gave folks some ideas of how it could help them. Firstly, if you have a removal order and you're eligible to adjust your status, you're, you may request for a prosecutorial discretion to reopen your case and terminate proceedings against you. And we do this. We do this for individuals all across the country in all 50 states. Uh, we could help you with this particular process to reopen and terminate your removal case so that you may go to USCIS with your green card application, your 485, or we would request to reopen your case and stipulate to the relief of granting you adjustment of status or the green card, all in one um, one request to ICE. So this is very powerful for those of you who are eligible to adjust your status, but you just haven't been able to get your case reopened in immigration court proceedings to allow that to happen, there's a way now that it can happen for you. Now, the other strategy that we discussed in our email is uh, for those of you who may not be eligible for adjustment of status because of the way that you enter the United States potentially, or the fact that you have unlawful presence on your record and you now need a waiver, the unlawful presence waiver that would allow you to go back to your country and be interviewed at the U.S. Embassy, well, you could ask that your case, your removal case, be administratively closed so that you could apply for this waiver and then leave the U.S. for your embassy interview. Now, we also talked about the fact that Those of you who are actively in removal proceedings right now, you could ask for that to be your case to be terminated because you're not considered an enforcement priority. So you can do that, but you have to strategically think about, well, if I ask that my removal proceedings be terminated, will that yield me a green card? Am I going to get a green card or not? Right? So for example, if you have an asylum application pending before an immigration judge, and you have a really strong case, your asylum application could potentially result in a green card for you. Is yours the type of case that you should ask that it be terminated? I would tell you if you were my client, I would basically say, no, let's go all the way with my the asylum application so that you can get a green card in court rather than terminate proceedings. But if you don't have any other relief available to you uh, and you want to get out of the immigration court system, you could ask that your case be terminated um, uh, and because basically because you're not an enforcement priority. Now, what types of prosecutorial discretion cases do we work on? Well, firstly, friends, as I've mentioned, we work with folks nationwide, all 50 states, if they need to reopen an old case, if they have a removal order and they need to reopen it and terminate proceedings, we can do that for you. We also help those who need to stipulate to a particular relief so that you wouldn't have to go back to USCIS with a green card application. We also uh, ask for a case to be dismissed or terminated. Um, Those of you who are in ongoing removal proceedings, we do those ones as well. 
Now for New York, here's what we do for clients in New York City immigration court only. Well, we reopen old cases and terminate proceedings. We also stipulate to the relief that's available. Uh, we dismiss or terminate ongoing removal proceedings. And we also administratively close cases so that the client can go uh, apply for the waiver for unlawful presence and then go overseas for an embassy interview or if they um, are not going to pursue a waiver but they need to get the case administratively closed or taken off the docket for uh, various reasons we work on those matters as well friends if you're in removal or you have a removal order work with a licensed immigration attorney to settle the matter or to deal with the issues at hand that apply to your individual unique situation. I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to share it with others. Comment below and guys, I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.